we're talking breaded chicken sandwiches. And we got some info here. What kind of correlation, you with me peeps? What kind of correlation do we think that the amount of fat, this is the amount of fat, and this is the amount of calories our breaded chicken has? Positive. Positive. And we would say that in a sentence saying like, the more the... Yeah, this, this is the x-axis and then this is the y-axis. The more the fat grams, the typically the the more the calories, right? And then we were able to have our calculators draw this beautiful line of best fit. Love it. Could we also say the less the fat grams, the less the calories, typically? Yeah? So I agree. That means it's a positive correlation. Then your calculator will also create your y equals mx plus b line, line of best fit data, which is what they graphed here for us. And we were able to plug in 11.6x plus 228. Um, that's my line of best fit equation. So we went ahead and we wrote that, correct me if I'm wrong, in this blank down here. We said y equals 11.6x plus 228.3. We did not write that. Let's just say if you didn't, write it down. Great. Now... Let's talk about what the heck that means. This last thing wasn't there. I said, hey, use this equation to predict the number of calories in a chicken sandwich that has 20 grams of fat. Where would I put my 20 grams of fat? Look at this picture. Look at this graph. Fat is which axis? The x axis. So where am I going to put 20 grams of fat? The x variable. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And you can just do, you could do that two different ways, you guys. You could do that on your graph, or we could just go to the home screen and type in 11.6 times 20. Now, is this going to be as accurate? Bless you. 11.6 times 20 plus my y-intercept of 228.3. This is not going to be completely accurate because I'm missing all these decimals over here, aren't I? Yes. But that is all right. We're estimating. Okay, I got about 460 calories. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. So we could say, you know, about, about 460 calories. What if I asked, hey, estimate, if this chicken sandwich, if we're going to, you know, Wendy's, and that chicken sandwich has 700 calories, could we estimate about how many grams of fat we'd have in that chicken sandwich? How would we do that? Yeah, that means 700 calories is that Y value. So we'd have 700 equals 11.6X plus 228.3. Go ahead and tell, go ahead and figure out about how many grams of fat could we predict that sandwich would have? 40.7 40. grams of fat. I did that by solving for X. Um, do you guys know how many grams of fat are in a Whopper? I'm going to say 42. I think it's in the 60s. Let's check. On the back here. On the next page, you guys, I, it says, what is the R referring to on your calculator? I'm going to go grab that. What is the R referring to? Yesterday when I had you come up with the Y equals MX plus B, look at what your calculator did for us. It gave us some R squared value and an R value. Okay, This R value is just squared to get us 0.95. This R value tells us about the strength of the correlation. And so check this out. Do you agree our R value was 0.98? Yes. Do you agree that our line of best fit was pretty linear? Like our points weren't too far apart. Like it had a very strong correlation. If that R value is between 0 and 0.5, it shows a positive correlation but pretty weak. Right? It's kind of, you know, it's definitely in the positive but it's very spread out. If that R is between 0.5 and 0.75, still positive definitely a little tighter, if you will. And then if it's between 0.75 and 1, it's a very strong positive correlation. Where would you say our, our, our R lies? Yeah, so we're going to say our, our R was 0.98. So there is a strong positive correlation. Um, again, those R values might be negative to demonstrate a negative correlation. And 
zero to negative 0.5 is again a, a negative yet weak, um, moderately weak, and then very strong, I'm sorry, moderately negative and then strong negative correlation if those values are negative, which is fine. Guys, we are gonna skip this part, but what I want to do is go to that next page. Okay, so let's take a peek. Uh, did anyone pick their fantasy football teams yet? Anyway, we've got some NFL coaches, the years that they coached and their amount of wins. What I want you guys to do is use this data, use this data, and I want you to go find these values. Let's get our Y equals MX plus B, our R equals, and then make a prediction. So let's go try this based on the instructions I gave you yesterday. Here's your data. You guys, what did you wind up getting for your Y equals MX plus B? 8.13 X plus 11.69. Okay, what was your R value? 0.86. And does anyone have their graph up by chance so that I could take a picture? Does this look like we have a positive correlation? Yeah. Yeah. Meaning, how could we say that in a sentence? What were our variables we were talking about? The more years you coach, typically, the more wins you have. Or conversely, say it backwards. The less years you coach, typically, the less wins you have. Does that make sense? When you coach for more years, typically you have more time to get those wins. But if you're a really bad coach, it doesn't matter how much time you have. You might lose all the time. Um, so it's uh, our, our, our R was 0.86. Would we say that's strong? Yes. Yeah, based on the information before, if it's anything above 0.75, it's going to be strong. So we're going to say, yeah, yes. Marv. Isn't Marv a name from uh, Home Alone? Yeah. <laughs> Marv. <laughs> Levy. Coach, 17 years, can we predict how many wins he'd have? Yeah, what? Uh-oh, but, oh, 17 years, 17 was our X. So, that's a good question, I'll look. Uh, can you guys go type that in? What is 8.13 times 17 plus 11.69? 151, okay. I'm gonna show you guys a trick how to do that on your calculator. You guys, the last thing I wanna do Let's try this one more time. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the year and then minimum wage. Hoo -wee. 55, you're making 0.75. Is this linear? Let's see, because now we're at 2022. I'll look up the actual minimum wage rate, wage right now as you guys go type in this data. Oh, really? Okay, so you guys, I want you to go type in this data. We've got our years here and our wages here. I'm gonna let us know the actual minimum wage in 2022, in 2022 is 930, I just looked that up. We're gonna go see if this creates a prediction that gets us pretty close to that. So let's go type in new data. Again, on L1, you can hit clear and enter, and then L2, you can hit clear and enter. Okay, you guys, that was painful, but we did it. Okay, Braddock, here we go. So. Let's talk about, does it look like we have a positive linear relationship? Yeah. Look at our R. What do you think? Positive, strong? All right. So we got a good 0.97 again. That's definitely strong. Uh, that line of best fit, what are we going to say? Y equals 0.1X minus 213.34. And a lot of people are like, what? We had a negative, um, a negative minimum wage. Is this formula, do you think, good for any year out there? True, the year is in the thousands. So that has to kind of compensate, you're saying? So let's make a prediction. Let's go back to, uh, we kind of went back. Maybe we, let's predict 1900, what the minimum wage was in 1900. If I were to do that, oopsies. If I were to do that, and I did 0 0.1, whoops, 0 0.1 times 1900 minus my 213.34, still a negative, right? So you guys, these lines of best fit aren't going to be good for from year zero 
to year 4,000, right? Things are going to change. So maybe we clarify that this starts at um, maybe 1930 or something like that because we still can't have a negative line of best fit. Does that make sense? Is this going to be good forever? No, things are going to change. Let's see about 2022. This is the actual, we, we all looked it up. This is the actual minimum wage right now. Let's see how accurate it is. Let's go with my 0.1. If I did 0 0.1 times 2022 minus, oops, minus my 213, minus my 213.34. Well, that's not looking accurate at all, is it? What am I doing wrong? I shouldn't have to. That's a good question. Right. I see what you're saying. Say that again. What did it do? Hmm. You got seven point. But how does that? Oh. But that means it's going down. You got 9.08 on the graph or typing it in? You guys, me, this is why I hate typing in, um, ooh, I hate typing in um, rounding. Do you guys agree? What was our slope? Point 0.109. Yeah, point 0.109, and I wrote point, point 0.1. I really cut that off, didn't I? So what if I went a little bit more accurate and Aiden went 0 0.11, which it would round to 0 0.11 if we were just dealing with cents. I'm going to go with um, just three decimals. Actually, maybe even I go two more. 24929. Two, I'm going to go with what I see. Times the year 2022 and then minus my 213.34. Actually, I'm going to keep that right. 33895.18. Does that help our accuracy? Yeah. yeah. No. No. That's actually, that would, that would die. That went from the, but I'm just letting you know, that helped me go from a negative answer to $7.56 uh, an hour. So this is why what we're going to use this year, we're going to definitely use the full values from our graph. Now, here's what I want you to do. Go back to that calculator and this is what I'm going to put this back up here and let's go do the value from my actual calculator. Ireland, do you mind if I use your calculator again? Thank you, darling. You guys, let's go to this graph. We're gonna hit trace and I'm gonna hit the up arrow to get on my actual line. Look what you already did, I love it. If I go 2022 and hit enter, oh shoot, our window, it's outside of our window, duh, because that wasn't part of our statistics. If I go to 2000, 2010, 2015, is that in my window? What's the minimum wage in 2015 is it predicting? $6.80, which, which I agree, in 2015, I think that our minimum wage is even higher. If I do Zoom, I'm just curious, can I do Zoom out, enter? Yeah, okay, I did Zoom out, enter, and now I can do trace, Make sure that I'm on the line. So I'm going to do an up arrow to make sure I'm on the line. Now I'm going to hit 2022. And now it predicts that in the year 2022, our minimum wage would have been $7.56. So is this line of best fit kind of behind the times? Yes. Is it valid anymore? Not like, really. uh-uh, we don't want to use this one anymore because it's, it's pretty far off. But it was good for the years that it dealt with. Sound good? Thanks, my girl, Ireland. Cancel that. Okay. Here's what I want you to graph on your board. I want us to just start with, I want us to just start with a good old y equals negative 3x plus 4. So the restraint I just put on is I only want this graph for x is greater than or equal to 1. I, I picked where x is 1 on my graph, and I kept all the graph available. For those x values, x is 2 here, that's greater than or equal to 1. x is 3, that's greater than or equal to 1. Are you guys okay with that? So now I'm going to give us a different line. And I want this separate line that I want you to graph. Keep what's on your page. Keep what's on your page. 
I want this to be y equals, let's go with um, 2x plus mm, 3. Could you please go graph 2x plus 3, that entire line? But I want the other graph still there. Okay, if you didn't, that's okay. Oh my gosh, I already said it. Don't yell at me. I got you, Bill. <laughs> Sounds good, Daria. I'm down with that. So you guys, this blue line on mine, does that look like your 2x plus 3? Yeah. I want this one to exist only for x values less than 1. So now I want you to think, where are my x's equal to 1? It's here. Where does that 1 intersect my blue graph? Would you agree it's at the point 1, 5? Yes. I want this blue graph for all x values that are less than 1. If I kept it to the right, isn't this when x is 2 and 2 is not less than 1? But if I went to the left... X is zero is zero less than one. Yeah. And negative one is less than one. So I'm going to erase anything greater than one. What do you think I need to put when X is one? A whole or a closed circle? Say that again. When it's, uh, not one, it's open. He's saying because it's not or equal to, I need to put an open circle when X is one there. And this is saying, hey, this blue graph exists when my X values are less than one, not, gr not or equal to one. You guys Gucci with that? So make sure, yeah, there it is, at least perfect. Now, how, is this still a function? Would this graph, this piecewise graph, pass the vertical line test? What about here? You guys, so good. Did it only pass through one point? Yes. And then over here, is it still only passing through once? This piecewise function is a function. Good job, you guys. This is hard, in my opinion. This is a hard thing. My students struggle with it. So that's why I want to start with the dry erase boards. We're going to start with the whole line and erase what we don't need. Let's try this again. You can erase your whole board. Okay, guys. What if I say y is equal to negative uh, 1 fourth x minus 3? Let's graph that. Why are we mad at this one? Oh my gosh, I can't graph it myself, Beck, so I just messed that up too. Okay, you guys agree we've got this pretty flat-ish, shallow, if you will, line. You guys, I want this graph for uh, x values. I want this graph to only exist for x values that are greater than negative 4. X values that are greater than negative 4. Are you with me, Mario, Lucas, Dice? Yeah, no. I want this graph, thanks for your honesty, um, to exist only when x's are greater than negative 4. Where are we erasing? Yes, Noah. Yes, Noah. I want it to only exist when my x's are greater than negative 4. At negative 4, is negative 3 greater than negative 4? Yes. Is negative 2? I like all this to the right. So I need to erase the things to the left. What do I need to do at negative four? Open. Thank you. Okay, this next one's gonna be a little funky. This next one's gonna be a little funky. Y, y equals three. Keep what you've got. Y equals, oh my gosh, Daria. <laughs> y equals three. It's okay, Daria, don't worry about it. What does Y equals three look like? Straight line across. Good. Instead of saying straight, we're going to say horizontal. Perfect. Here's y equals 3. I only care about this, my x values less than or equal to negative 4. Close circle, I agree, at negative 4. I have a little trick. Check this out. You guys, this is a fun little trick. Do you see what this symbol here? Watch, oh, careful, this one right here is less than. Watch this, I'm going to zoom this in just to give you a trick. If you go like this, Abby, I think you're going to like this. Boop, that just tells you which way we like it. You know what I'm saying? 
Let's go, if and then let's look at this greater than, I don't know why it wouldn't blow this one up. Hold on. Greater than just means, hey, I want it to exist over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for x is less than or equal to negative 4, I need that to exist everything to the left of negative 4. So I'm going to get rid of all this over here. It's a very common mistake. Yes, Aiden. Thank you so much. This trick only works if that variable is written first, okay? So that is super important. Um, any problem from a textbook and things, and from me, I will always give it to you written first. Um, but to your point, like if we're solving multi-step equations, inequalities, and that variable gets to the other side, rewrite it forward. I agree. Good call, Dice. Y'all, do we have a function? Yes, ma'am. Yes, because it goes to the... Um, yes. Totally. If I would have done this, if I would have done this up here, do you see what I'm doing here? If I would have underlined this, Mario Lucas, and then this would have been full, would this still be a function? No. Nope, good call. Great, what if they were both open? Yeah, this is a function, I agree. I agree, great question. Because a vertical line would not go through the graph actually at all there. So good, so good, so good. Last one, we are gonna do a three piece. Oh, I'll show you in a bit. The last one, we're gonna do a triple. Mm-hmm, I'm gonna start with y equals negative four x minus four. I'm going to say y equals 2, and I'm going to say y equals 3x plus 4. Whoa. Whoa, I just put a lot of restraints on here. Here's my recommendation. Ignore my restraints first. Take one at a time. Let's say you graphed all three. Let's try it. I'm going to go different colors, which you guys don't have the luxury of. Negative 4x minus 4. Do you agree it's pretty steep? Yes, ma'am. Look where I want that. My x's have to be less than or equal to negative 2. So, where do we want the graph to exist? I'm going to do my little, uh, 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 uh. I want the graph to exist that way. So, where do I need to erase? Everything from the right all the way until x is negative 2. Does that make sense, Kale? Yeah. Let's look at this. Ready? My x is negative 2 here. Boop, 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 boop. That's where it met my graph. Yeah? And again, maybe erase your other two graphs if, this, if they're in the way right now. Just erase them if you're like, this is confusing. So when you do this on your worksheet, I do recommend doing one at a time. Don't graph them first. One at a time, get its limits. So now let's just take a peek at this one. Y equals two, it's gonna look like what? Straight. Boop. Thank you. Horizontal at two. And then again, on my, if I was on a paper, I might draw this very lightly. Where do I care about this? Ooh, I gave us some funky restraints here. Do you agree we've got to be less than zero, but bigger than negative two? Less than zero, but bigger than negative two. And again, if you want to write this out, so to Dice's point, he's like, mm, this only works if my x is first. This is really x is greater than negative two. This is really x is less than zero. So that lets me see, I'm going to zoom this in over here. Whoa, I can't because it's all separate. This lets me see I need to go to the right of negative two, but to the left of zero. Do you see what I did there, Abs? I went psh, to the right of negative two, psh, but to the left of zero. So I'm gonna go to my graph, and I'm gonna say, if here's my graph, I wanna go to the left of zero, but to the right of negative two, I'm gonna get rid of everything else on the outside of zero to two. How do we feel about that? Oh yeah, Max, this is a cute little graph, isn't it? What are we gonna do on the endpoints of my cute little segment? Open or closed? They're both gonna be open, so I'm gonna go whoop, 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 whoop. I wish that that line was straighter. There it is. 
And my last one, 3x plus 4, when my x's are greater than or equal to 0. 3x plus 4, I'm going to go up 4, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, etc. And I might even draw my dots, but I might not draw in my line. Because don't forget, when you have a paper pencil, you don't want to do a ton of erasing, right? So this is the structure of this line. My x's are greater than or equal to 0, so that's going to say, hey, go that way. Go that way. Keep it that way. And I care about it when my x's are 0, which is here, and to the right. So I care about it here. And then I do need to go get rid of these extra points that I put because they wouldn't be a function if I had extra dots, right? Is this supposed to be closed here? Yeah, so I'm going to make that a little bit more noticeable there. Is this still a function? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Braddock, shh. What you're going to do is I want you guys to write the equation that this represents. Mm -hmm. 3 different equations. Hoo -wee. Well, that's not bad. I appreciate your optimism. Whoa. Now, you're like I can't even see too well, so I'm going to try to zoom this in as much as I can to help you. So, let's do one of them together. Let's start with this one together and then I'm going to feed you to the wolves. Let's do that one. You guys, if I were to continue this, that's the equation of the line, right? Okay, let's write this. We'd say my y is equal to, what do you think my slope is here? What am I rising and running? One over one. So we're going to say y equals one x or just x. Y equals x. What's my y-intercept? Six. Great. There's that, that's that equation. Where did I care about that? Oh, darn it. I thought that would only erase the top layer. Where do we care about this graph? When it's less than negative three. Yes, he's saying when my x is less than negative three. Less because we went that way. Graham, perfect. Yep. Okay, that is one word to use. Okay. <laughs> Let's go try my next line, this line. I want the function and its interval that it's on. And I want you to try this one. I tried to give you pretty basic slopes because I know you've got to count this from afar. Let me zoom this in for you again. Look at that. Love it. Okay. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It was just that. I thought I'd have a y-intercept. I didn't. Great, perfect, Daria, yes. Perfect, good correction. Be careful on this notation button. You always want the X in the middle and then the bounds on either side. This look, oh, check this out. I like this. Yeah. Check your y-intercept for that one. Yep. Looks good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now try, what's the equation for this one, though? Y equals, yep. And then this has a positive slope, and my green line is going down, right? Oh, yeah, I'm not done with this. Oh, okay. Yes? Oh, is that one sec, dude. Um, good. Do I need a zero minus x, or could I just say that's negative x? <laughs> yeah. Now, what's the what's the bounds for a y is? Oh, I didn't know we were doing that one. Yet. Really? Because you did the equation, the bounds, and the equation. Now I just need the bounds. What are we gonna do with them, Jaden? Pardon me. I'm gonna squeeze behind you. Looks great. Is this right? All right. No. No, it's kind of hard. Your slope on number three. You guys, let's. Yes, oh, good, Eleanor, good start. Y equals 1x plus 0, I agree. And we could even just say x, right? We could even say exactly. Beautiful. And then underline these guys. You're good. 
because they're closed circles. Do you agree? Um, closed there. Yep. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Eleanor, great. Here's the deal. On this one, do you agree? This is open circle. Mm -hmm. So I want that to not be underlined. Oh. These are closed circles. Oh. Yeah. Good. Okay, you guys, help me out. You with me, Brad at Graham. I want to see the front of your face, not the back of your head. Here we go. What's the equation of this line? Y equals one. Thank you. Y equals one. Where, for what X's does this exist? What domain? From negative three all the way to two. So if you were to write this, which you guys didn't, and I love it, you could have written X is greater than or equal to negative three and X is less than two or equal to. You could have written it that way, but most people wrote the X in the middle and then your bounds on either side, and I love that. You guys, your symbols will always match. They'll always match each other, and this is the better way to write it. This one, what was my Y-intercept here? Uh, zero. zero. What was my slope? Negative. negative one, right? So then we'd say negative X plus zero. For what X values was this function? What's the domain of this function? X is what compared to two? Excellent. We're gonna now practice this paper pencil. Who, in my opinion, is harder than a dry erase board. So, let's start with this. Uh, we don't have to graph. It just says, hey, if here's my function, here's my function, I wanna know what's F of negative three. Which one of these functions, top or bottom, can we plug negative three into if we're looking when my x is negative three? Which one of these domains, green or red, does this satisfy? Is negative three less than zero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's what tells us then I need to plug that in right there. Six times negative three is negative 18 minus one, negative 19. That's how we're gonna uh, analyze these. If my x equals zero, can I plug it into green? No, that's, my x's have to be less than zero, but in red, my x's have to be greater than or equal to zero. If I plug in a zero there, we'd get three. And finally, well, about a full. Four is less than zero, or four is greater than or equal to zero? Yes, therefore, I'm gonna plug it in down here. Seven times four? 31. Oh, 28 plus three is 31, good. And good job, Brad. Two. Okay, good let's go right here. If my x is negative three, do we wanna go gray function or green function? Negative three is less than or equal to negative one, so be careful. Do not type this in your calculator because I promise it's gonna make it worse. What is negative three squared? Nine. nine. If you were to type it into your calculator like this, your calculator is going to say negative nine. Because again, you aren't squaring the entire negative three, but in your head you are. So keep it with your head. Um, so we'd have nine minus nine, Which is zero. zero over, well, it, doesn't it doesn't matter. Even though it'd be zero over negative one, we would still say it's just zero. Yes. For f of one, do I plug it into gray or green? One is greater than negative one. Ooh! Where do I plug it in? How do I plug it into six? You can't. What's the function? Six. six. So it's just going to be six. So let's think about this real fast. What is f of... What is f of x fancy for? Y. So this bottom function is just y equals six. So when my x is one, is my y still six? If my x is two, is my y still six? Yeah, there's nowhere to plug it in. My function is six no matter what. Uh, Graham, you had a question. Oh, I didn't really have a question. Me and Brad are just like plugged into the top. Oh, I got gotcha. you. But you know we can't because that function doesn't exist for positive numbers. Good. You guys, let's let's go try. That's all right. Let's all go try this first one. This is like what we were doing on our dry erase boards. Holy moly! Let's try. Let's just focus on the top function. Don't even look at the bottom one yet. Two x. How are we graphing two x? Start at the zero. You're going to go up to over one positive. Agreed. Up to over one positive. I like it. Now, you guys, I put in a ton of dots because I'm on an iPad and this is very easy. You might not want to put in as many dots. You might want to look at this domain that they gave you. 
They only want this to exist when my x's are less than or equal to 4 as well as greater than or equal to 0. Abs, how we were saying that we like this rewriting it, we might want to rewrite this as x is greater than or equal to 0 and x is less than or equal to 4 to let us see, ooh, I got to go to the right of 0 and to the left of 4. Know what I'm saying? Because dice remind us of that rule. So you guys, if I only want this graph when my x's are greater than 0 or less than 4, I want my x's to be greater than 0, but less than 4. Here's when x is 0. Here's when x is 4. 1, 2, 3. Oh, I didn't go, yeah, I did go far enough. So what I think is helpful is often looking 1, 2, 3, 4. What my student teacher did last year, let's say that she had this entire graph drawn. She would say 0 to 4 was 0 to 4, just to help her see that's the window. And then she would erase everything else. So she'd say, get rid of you, get rid of you. And then I'd get rid of my kind of guidelines. Do that if it's helpful for you. My student teacher was great last year. Did anyone have her and Mrs. Mrs. Yeah, Miss Roth. Aw. <laughs> hey. well, she like my... Take a peek at this next one. What is this function going to look like? Y equals 8. What's it going to look like? Y equals 8. Than four less than but what's Y equals 8 look like? Horizontal. horizontal at 8. So again, you might want to draw really lightly since you don't have your dry erase board anymore. This is Y equals 8. Where do we want that to exist? Um, than yeah. Than My X is being greater than 4, four less than or equal to 7. Okay. So again, Mrs. Roth guidelines would look like this. 4, oops. They would look like this, 4 to 7. That's what her guidelines would be. There's 4 on the x-axis. There's 7 on the x-axis. We want bigger than 4 or to the right of 4 and to the left of 7, less than 7. So are we going to do what? What's the matter? Um, when those points intersect, but one should be across. Correct. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Great questions. First of all, are you okay with me getting rid of this outside area? Yeah. We only want between 4 and 7. So I'm going to get rid of my guidelines as well. And then Braddock brings up the best question. He says, uh, we have a problem. Because at 4 in the first equation, they wanted us to close that circle. At 4 on the second equation, they wanted us to leave it open. Guys, if it is ever closed, that always trumps an open circle. So because it was closed, it stays closed. If it was open and then the second equation said close it, you close it. Okay. What about at 7? Close it up, y'all. Close it up. Is this a function? Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, yes. yes, it is. Yes. Why would it not be a function, dog? Oh, no. Yo, dog. Yo, dog. Don't be asking. I think it's okay for people to guess wrong. It's okay. Does any vertical line always cross through once? Yeah. This is a function. So yes. yes, I'm going to write FN for function. Okay. Ooh oh, oh my God. Whew. Let's worry about the top one first. Six. Y equals six. Wait, 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 wait. So it's just horizontal. Horizontal again at six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got a horizontal line. Where do we care about this function? Less than or equal to. Negative 6. Negative 6 on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6 is here. It's a closed dot. And which way do we go? Left. We like it to the left, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of to the right. And I'm going to get rid of my guideline. And as Beck said, close that dot. Yeah. Then you're like, what? Anyone remember what an absolute value of x looks like, that graph? Yes. Mario, it has, it has to be positive. All the y values will always be positive. You want to know what it is. It's just y equals x. And like you said, these y values are negative in the graph y equals x. If I'm the origin right here, if it's got to be positive, just reflex it over. Bam, we've got our v. This is the absolute value of x. So you guys, the absolute value of x, it's got a slope of negative 1, and it has a slope of positive 1 on either side of the origin. It is a perfect v. Where do we care about this perfect V? Uh, 
I'm going to rewrite this. X is greater than negative 6, and X is less than or equal to 6. Greater than 6. I'm going to do my little arrow. Pew! I want it greater than negative 6. So. To the... To the right of negative 6, I want it. So I'm going to get rid of to the left of negative 6. To agree, at negative 6, I'm actually here. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm here. Yep. Do they intersect? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was closed already, so it stays closed. We're good all the way, and then I want my x's to be less than 6. One, two, three, four, five, six is here. I want them to be less. Less, left, to the left. I want it to be to the left. What do we do? Get rid of to the right. Okay? Open or closed? Close it up. What are we ending with? Mario. Put it away. Out of your lap. I've said this multiple times in one week. Another horizontal. When my y is greater than six. Oh my gosh. So I got another horizontal. I want those x values to be bigger than six. It was, do I keep it open? Do you see at six, it was closed, so I keep it closed. That's kind of a cool looking graph. Function or no? Yes. Yeah, because when I draw my vertical line, Pew, 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 Passes that vertical line test. I want you guys to try these last two on your own. We got seven minutes. That's it. I want you to try these last two. And that's it for the day. If you get confused with two plus X, how could we rewrite that so that it looks like slope intercept form? X plus two. So that's the same as Y equals X plus two. And then we could rewrite my bounds as X is greater than negative two. X is less than or equal to 3.